Are we doing practice? Yeah. Uh, two. Two, period. So, do you have the practice exam? Here, Bob. Practice midterm number two? Yeah. yeah. Okay, he's got it. Okay. Um, This is problem two. Um, given the following data, I have two equilibrium, pro two equilibrium processes, um, uh, A plus B going in equilibrium with C plus E, and uh, the second equilibrium is D plus F in equilibrium with C plus E. I have the equilibrium constants. Uh, what is the value of the equilibrium constant K3 for the following processes? 2A plus 2B equals then equilibrium 2D plus 2F. And so, I already heard somebody say, what, what law is this Hess's one? Hess's this is Hess's law. Uh, uh, essentially, it's going to be Hess's law, and Hess's law is going to be relevant in terms of what was it, it, of the free energy. So if the free energy, if I have two processes that are thermodynamically coupled, then the free energy for the, 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 the process itself is going to be equal to the sums of the free energies of those coupled reactions. Right. And how do I how do I thermodynamically couple reactions? How do they become thermodynamic? When what? If the products of water, the reactants of another. Exactly. Yeah. If the products of one of the reactions is a reactant in another reaction, then those two are thermodynamically coupled. And what was the uh, if I had to reverse a reaction, uh, what do I do to the free energy? It becomes the negative of that. And so we can uh, we can find um, the uh, the applicable or the corresponding relationship with the equilibrium constants from several approaches. We can take the Hess's law information and do it in terms of the delta G's and then by noting that the delta G is going to, uh, and, and the relation between K and delta G, we can find that we, we're going to add the delta G's, so it's going to be in the exponent, and so when we add an exponent, when we factor that, it's the same as the sum, uh, uh, the, the sum is the same as the product. Right, okay. And, or we could do this based on just the empirical law of mass action. It can easily be shown just using that. So there are several equivalent approaches. I'm going to do the scratch paper approach to the free energy because that one draws upon the principles we were learning at the very beginning. 
and I want to keep those fresh. Again, we got to keep those simple first principles. Those are the first principles we're going to build on. And so I'm going to, this part, I want to derive the, 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 the corresponding relation between the three, the, the equilibrium constants uh, relating it to Hess's law. So this would be a scratch paper thing that in case you forget, you could just memorize the fact, but in case you forget, this is what I'd like you to do. Uh, um, since k is equal to e to the minus delta g over rt, right? And remember from when, from how did I get that? Uh, we can let's so even derive that. It. Remember that's delta, that's delta g equals negative or delta g naught alpha naught there equals minus r t natural log of k. And therefore, natural log of k equals minus delta g naught over r t, and k is equal to e to the minus delta g naught over r t. So we'll use that relationship to show this. And so if um, delta g3 is equal to delta g1 plus delta g2, then uh, k3 is going to be equal to uh, 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 E to the minus delta G naught one plus delta G naught two over RT. And now the reason I like doing it this way is because this is another factoring step that you want to be able to spot routinely. Since this is a sum, what is that? I add these in the exponent, what's that the same thing as? This is equal to? Multiple. Yeah, it's equal to e to the minus delta g naught 1 over rt times e to the minus delta g naught 2 over rt. And that is equal to k1 times k2. So K3, if I add two reactions together, they're thermodynamically coupled. I add them together, that means the product of one process is a reactant in another process. Uh, and then those processes are now thermodynamically coupled. And so what do I do with the equilibrium constants? I multiply the corresponding equilibrium constants. So we're adding two equilibria together this is how you can remember this relation. And that keeps us rooted in our foundation, the, the first principle approach. Now, armed with this information, we're going to, uh, if I reverse a reaction, because it's going to occur, so, so if I multiply a reaction times something, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be occurring in the exponent, so, I would then, whatever I do is going to be, like if I double it, I'm going to square the uh, equilibrium constant. And if I reverse it, I'm going to take, it's going to be to the minus one power. It's like multiplying it times minus one, so I'm going to take the reciprocal. Okay? And it, and it can be shown using the same logic here. If I, if I multiplied it times so let's say I, I doubled one of these. I doubled, so it was delta G3 was equal to 2 times delta G1. Then it would be a 2 there, and this would be K1 squared. See what I mean? If I reversed it, then it would be, if this was minus, then it'd be a minus 1, which would be, uh, 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 if you make this a plus, which would, uh, which would be, K2 to the minus 1. Okay, so that's how you keep your feet on the ground as far as this is concerned. You can, just, after doing this a few times, you're just going to have it. You're going to memorize that fact, but rather than just memorizing the equations, 
memorize a basis of, 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 of fundamental elements of elementary laws and core relations that we can use to derive the appropriate expression. And that's going to make life easy.